just got back from a little excursion. I don't want to say what country I was in because I want to respect the people there. Um, but I just want to say, I, I'm really getting tired of people that just don't care. I'm really getting tired of affluenza. Um, when, when someone's life is super, super easy, it's, it's, it's very easy to stand in judgment and to be critical to, to say, oh, I should really try to be patient with those complainers. You know, listening to people complain is something that takes patience. You know, when you're affluent and your, your problems include wondering which of your three new cars in your four car garage you're going to drive whether or not you should fill the fourth parking space in your garage with a fourth car or maybe a fifth and you should expand your garage. When those are your problems, people that are actually making things happen in the world, just, they, just I don't know why they complain. I, I, I don't know why they complain. I, I, what's, what's wrong? So in this country I was traveling to, We'll, we'll say uh, the, the, the local language was uh, Thai. Uh, Thailand's in the news. So, so we'll say it was Thai. I go talk with a, the pastor, American pastor, speaks American, lived in Thailand. Again, this is fictitious. So uh, we'll, we're supposing Thailand, not actually, but to make my story work, we'll say that it's Thailand. Living in Thailand, 10 years, can't even speak with a Thai accent. Goes to McDonald's to order a hamburger. Hamburger! He's been there 10 years. Uh, meanwhile, he's clueless as to why all the kids got trapped in the cave. Why did the soccer coach take the, the Thai kids up into the cave? D do you know? I'll tell you. If you don't know, I'll tell you exactly why he took him in there when it was dangerous. Because when you live in a country where 10 year old boys go to the hospital to have surgery so that they medically, physically become girls because they can make money that way until they finish growing into adults. And this is all worth the rest of their life being difficult, which it is because the government makes it difficult so that they can make money that short time. And then when they become adult men, the military says that they are required to go to military service as men and they have to, you know, operate in certain ways as men and so forth. And I, and there are some provisions that they allow, like, like if you had this change, uh, you don't have to take off all your clothes in front of the other men. You are allowed a, a private place, but you're still considered legally a man. The government doesn't recognize this change, but the people do it anyway. Who's right and wrong. It, it, we don't even get to who's right and wrong. This is a catastrophe. And when things are so bad in your country that it's worth it to go into that catastrophe so that you can help your family pay the bills. That's not a country that really thinks far into the future because no matter what you do, something crazy is going to come along and mess up what you do. So why in this situation would a soccer coach Think about taking food and provisions and looking at the weather before going three, four kilometers into a cave. That wouldn't make any sense. Well, in such a country where people don't think about that, you're going to get a diver 
who's going to go away back into the cave. He's going to deliver some important supplies to them, like oxygen, so they don't run out. And then he's going to come back and run out of oxygen on the way back and die on the way back. Why? In Western military, first responder, you know, police, paramedic culture, you know, I was, I'm, I'm a certified lifeguard. I was anyway. There, there are certain rules. Rule number one, don't die helping someone else. If you die, you can't help them. Now, it may be you manage there's a situation where you have to choose between your life and theirs and you, you save their life. But dying in the process and getting both of you, you know, getting you know, both of you getting killed, that doesn't help anybody. Rule number one in helping people is don't become the victim yourself. So they have these rules. Look at how much oxygen you have. Look at your air gauge. What's your time? I, I, I don't mean to be critical. I, I'm not trying to say bad things about anybody, but I believe that if there was an American scuba diver going back into that cave, he would have said, um, it's too close to the line. I don't have enough oxygen to get back. So I'm going to stay here with you guys and maybe I should stay and make sure everything's okay. And they're just going to have to come looking for us. They're going to think I died, but they're going to come back and find that I'm here. I, I'm going to play it safe. I've got extra oxygen for the rest of you. I'm not going to risk losing oxygen going back. But when you come from a culture that doesn't live by clear rules and you, you have to work and work to make ends meet every day, it, you get into this desperate emotional mode and I've got to get back to save the kids. And then you end up running out of oxygen. That's, that's the culture. It's, 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 I don't mean to blame people. We in the West have let down Thailand. Why haven't we in the West been engaging Thailand more so they, they were thinking about these things more? Thailand's asking, why, how did this happen? And so they got soul searching going on. Again, I don't mean to be critical, but this is just, a, it's, life is hard in Thailand. That's why this happened. Life is hard in Thailand. It's really hard. And we need to be better in the West to help them. Now, if someone's in that country and he hasn't learned to tie, he's a pastor, that's weird to me. And then I go down to a, 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 a druggy detox clinic. And there's an American who's not a pastor, just a guy, a dude. He's about my age. And he's been there five years and he's fluent in Thai. You know, I, I learned something. I'm, I'm going to put it this way before I get to, uh, get to my point. I, I think we're looking at crazy. I think that we're looking at crazy. We need love in the world, and I think we're looking at crazy. When someone is so affluent, we've got the Marie Antoinette syndrome, let them eat cake. When you're working with the people that are having a hard time, that pastor that didn't even speak the language after 10 years, doesn't even have the accent after 10 years, can't even pronounce words, will easily say, why do you complain about this? D do you think maybe you should be more appreciative? You know, that's what he'll say. And I found that people are apathetic about things that they don't want to believe in. Because if we need to help Thailand, if we need to help drug addicts, then that means that we're, we're doing the wrong stuff. And so we don't want to care about people that have problems because they're helping other people with problems, because that would mean that we're not helping the people that we should be helping. And I'm out of time and I need to get to my point. Mental conditions originate from many sources, whether medical or emotional, physical abuse, or a learning style ignored, or a type of autism wrongly reacted to. Situations like these get worse and worse, spiraling around a self-smothering cocoon of crazy. Once cocooned up in the crazy tree, no one can help that person more than that person is willing. Everyone feels the pull to climb crazy trees at times. The only thing that pulls us down from climbing crazy is love from other people. Knowing that someone on the ground loves us and calls out to us can call us back down. And that's the point. 
I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.